Hello everyone. So in this uh, video, I'm going to talk about integrating a caffeine cache with the Spring Boot. Okay. Uh, so I'm I'm very sure that you are already familiar with uh, the the Spring caching uh, mechanism, right? There is a there is a very flexible and powerful abstraction that has been provided by the by the Spring framework, uh, which basically set a level of abstraction, so you don't have to go into the nitty gritties of the caching uh, APIs, right? Uh, and then there are the, the benefit of this one is this caching abstraction is uh, it doesn't matter which caching API you want to uh, use underlying right you want to use a EH cache you want to use a caffeine cache you want to use um, some uh, external or a third party uh, caching APIs or you want to create your own caching APIs right uh, so it basically you just have to uh, add those dependencies if you want to do some customization go ahead and do those customization but the rest of it you don't have to write any specific or a custom code around it okay so we are going to talk about that one so that's all about the the spring caching abstraction and then uh, caffeine cache has a certain uh, kind of uh, uh, really uh, powerful points for example uh, the one thing is very similar to the guava caching api and the other interesting thing is it has been written into the um, java 8 and it's a uh, uh, in memory cache with the near optimal hit that's uh, that's how they describe it right and if you want to get into more detail of the caffeine cache i think i will highly encourage you to go to the to their to their documentation and read about all those things but what i am assuming right now is if you are going through this uh, uh, tutorial so you already have finalized the caffeine cache and you just want to look into the steps okay so let's start uh, so for this one, I'm going to create a simple application. I'm not going to create a web application, uh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, the integration steps are going to be exactly the same, whether it's your uh, web-based application or it's a standalone application, right? So we will not get into those kind of uh, details. We will be more focused on the steps and the configuration those are required to use the caffeine cache as your uh, underlying caching API, okay? So let's get started. So I'm going to create a, a, a simple project using a Spring Initializer, and I'm going to import that into my IntelliJ. Uh, so let's let's uh, start doing that one. So I have my application uh, set up. So in order to save some time, I have uh, created few classes up front, uh, and we will going to uh, talk about those one. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enable the the caching abstraction for my Spring Boot application. And in order to do that, you just have to add another dependency, and that is basically the Spring Boot Starter Cache. Okay, so what it is going to do is, it's going to uh, do all the underlying work for you. Uh, this is basically the auto configuration. If you don't know the auto configurations, I highly encourage you to go through one of my another video, which talk about how the auto configuration work internally. Uh, but in sh short. What it is going to do is it's going to create all the configuration those are required uh, in order to start using the caching API. Okay, so this is the default uh, setup for the Spring Boot. So it's going to use the default uh, caching API for the Spring Boot application, right? But we are more interested to use the caffeine cache. So I'm going to add another dependency, uh, which is basically the caffeine cache dependency to my com.xml. Okay. So I right now I'm using a 2.7.0 uh, for this uh, video, but uh, you can use the latest version if you want. Okay. So this entry are going to add the uh, the required jar files to my application. Now these works, these two things are work going to work very closely. So the moment Spring would see that okay, hey, there is a jar file into the class path, the caffeine uh, jar path, right? So it's going to create all the auto configurations which are required in order to start using the caffeine cache, right? Like uh, you need a caffeine cache managers and all those things. Those will be automatically going to take and care for you. Okay, that's the beauty of the Spring Boot. Okay, so let's move to the next uh, part. Okay, so I have created a very simple application. So I have this interface. It's not a very complicated. It's not a fancy one. It's taking a customer ID as an input and returning a customer, right? If it finds a customer, it returns it. If it doesn't find the customers, okay, it will return a null value, okay? And, okay, let me remove this one. Let me remove this one as well, okay? We will cover these one. Let me increase the size, okay? 
so this is not a very uh, fancy one and i don't want to get into details because for the caching api it doesn't matter what you are doing underlying okay you are you are querying a multiple system or one system it doesn't matter okay so we are more focused on what will happen once i get the result what will happen the next time will it going to call the method or it is going to serve me from the caching okay so i have a simple this method and it basically sending some uh, some static data and you can always uh, change those implementation okay so let's start setting up our uh, our, uh, our caching api okay so the first thing i'm going to do is okay if i did a mistake i added a service and add service annotation okay the first thing which i'm going to add is i'm going to add this annotation okay the caching one this is a class level annotation and what it going to do is it going to help us to streamline our uh, caching configuration as well as it's going to uh, kind of a configure it what is the the cache in which we want to use it right you can configure those different one for example for product you might want to have a different caching configuration right you want to name your caching region as a product okay so for this one this is a customer i'm going to name it as a as a customer okay so it can take a multiple values so let's do it as like this customer okay so now what is happening is i'm saying okay i'm setting a cache configuration i'm saying the cache name for this one is customer okay and for this one on the method level i'm going to add another uh, annotation which is a cacheable annotation so i'll add it okay okay so this annotation is going to tell our caching api that we want to store the result for this method into the cache okay so for the subsequent invocation the value of the cache returns without executing the method okay uh, i'm not going to get uh, going to get into the details of what are the different variations of the these annotation like what customization you can do what is the key con configuration all those things if you want to go to those one uh, i highly recommend to uh, read one of my other uh, blog post which covers all these annotations in a very detailed manner as well as what customization you can do okay so that's all on a high level i need uh, uh, in order to annotate my class to make sure that okay uh, once i added all those configurations so first time uh, the system will call underlying services get the data but it also going to cache it as well as going to return it so that the next invocation will going to return the data from the cache and we will see it once we run the application because ideally this log should only appears once the next time my data should be served from the cache so i should not see this uh, log information every time i make a call okay so we will get into those details next thing is i, I have uh, added few configurations here right uh, the first thing which i am saying i am telling the and this is into the application the profit api okay so the first thing I'm going to tell the Spring Boot caching mechanism is that what's the name of my uh, the caching, right? So right now I have used customer, but you have a multiple configurations. You can always do it using a comma separator. For example, products or maybe orders or maybe cart or something like that, right? You can you can go ahead and do that as a comma separator value. And I have also, as a part of the caffeine cache configurations, I say, okay, the maximum size is a 500 entries, right? And then I'm also setting uh, the expiry, right? Uh, for how long that is going to be uh, long, going to live into the caching. Right now, it's a, it's a 10 minute, right? Uh, time to live. So these are the, uh, the few configuration which are basically required. The next thing what I'm going to do is, okay, um, we want to use we want to pass some additional configuration right uh, so we can also um, do that one uh, so i'm going to cover that into the uh, into the next part of it okay so let's go ahead and do some additional configurations before i go there um, maybe if you are more interested to do it through the java configurations you can always do that by creating a separate configuration class okay so what you can do is create a let's say cache config okay should be working okay 
and then you can annotate it because this is a configuration class you can always annotate it with the configurations okay and the other thing how what we are going to do is uh, we are going to uh, do some additional config so instead of using your uh, your application dot property file if you want to configure it through the java configuration right so you should go with either step either application dot property file or you should go through the uh, the cache configuration okay so first thing what i'm going to do is i'm going to define a cache manager for my application okay so this is going to be public it should return the cache manager spring cache manager okay let's name it as a cache manager and since I'm working with a uh, caffeine, right? So I'm going to create an instance of a caffeine cache manager. Cache manager is equal to hmm, caffeine cache manager. And what I'm going to do is all right. So I created this. Okay, I basically create a caffeine cache manager passing a customer and then I'm creating this builder it's exactly the same uh, what I have done through the through the application dot property file right I'm setting initial capacity as 100 then I'm saying maximum size is 500 how long I should basically the the time to live what is the time to live right and then I'm passing it and returning it so as I said uh, uh, it's always a good practice either use application to property file or a configuration it's your choice whatever way you want to do it i personally prefer the uh, the configuration uh, because that's uh it's basically you don't need a code change okay so that's on a high level that's all what you need in order to do your uh, uh, integration with the caffeine cache right and then unless you really want to go into the more complex details where you want to customize it but you can always follow the documentation okay so let's see everything in action okay so I'm going to create a simple command line runner, uh, a simple uh, R starter, uh, which is going to implement the command line runner interface and we'll see that in action, okay? I have created this simple application, um, kind of, uh, I implemented the command line runner interface to test our application. So before we start testing it, let's do the last step, which tells Spring Boot that okay enable our caching so i'm going to add this enable caching as an annotation right that's going to tell the underlying spring boot uh, spring boot mechanism that hey i want to use the caching mechanisms just enable it for me okay so let's go back to our so i have already annotated it so you see for the first time i'm saying a get customer with the customer ID as one, second time customer ID two, and I'm expecting that uh, there will be no cache hit, right? Okay, so it should be cache hit. It should be cache hit. And this for this one, there will be no record into the cache, cache, right? So this there will be again no hit. I will see the logs and all the information, right? But the subsequent one should not. Let's say for the change one, I should change it to error. Okay, the subsequent one should not give us any log information right because everything should be uh, should be driven from the from the caching api okay so let's run our application and see uh, things are in action all right so let's run our application so to see these things are in action okay so right now i'm running my application okay so you can see for the first one on to the console um, I'm hoping that you're getting the result okay so i'm just increasing the size so for the first one you can see okay i got a hit uh, so in short i got a hit here uh, in this one right because i get into this method uh, the reason is because there is no caching when i'm passing id as one right for the second one again this is the first call with the customer id as a second so i got a hit saying hey uh, i'm getting getting the result but for all the subsequent one till the last one there is no log because everything is being served uh, from the uh, from the uh, from the cache itself right uh, i haven't kind of uh, out kind of uh, printing it but if you print it you will get the right result and for the last one 
I'm again seeing the logs, right? So that's all uh, for now. And I hope that uh, you get an idea about how you can integrate your Spring Boot with Caffeine Cashflow. Right? If you get, want to get into the more details, I have a separate blog post which covers uh, this integration and uh, some of the underlying facts in more detail. Just to summarize, all you need is a dependency into your prompt.xml file and then few lines of a configuration to start using uh, the caffeine cache or any other cache with your Spring Boot application. Okay, I hope you like this video. Uh, thanks for watching this one.